party. But anyway, hey everyone and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Monday of the month, which means it's time for Plant-Based Classics with Lauren Burnick, and she is going to be making a veganized version of the Jennifer Aniston salad. What is that? Well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. And she's going to veganize it as well as make a creamy vegetable soup and show you how you can make hummus in an ice cream maker. Please welcome her to the show. That is so revolutionary. How are you, Lauren? Hello, everybody. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> what is today? Today, Friday, the, day five. I think it's like day five. Yeah. Nice. So happy Hanukkah to anybody who celebrates. Yeah. Are, how are, are you, you doing? Make, are you making any latkes? We haven't had Tomorrow. latkes this year. Yeah, I'm going to make them tomorrow. Um, my kids are coming over for dinner. They're going to get creamy vegetable soup, uh, Jennifer Aniston salad, and latkes. So I'll make that tomorrow. Um, but I make them in the oven. Do you make latkes? I, you know, I, I do the cheater way. What I do is I, I do those things where you you have you microwave a small Yukon Gold and then you put it in a waffle iron and they taste just like latkes to me, you know? That's cheating. I thought you were going to say, because, you know, I used to, when the kids were little and I was so crazy busy and everything, I would just buy the uh, hash browns, like organic hash browns that are just really potatoes, um, but don't have any other ingredients in it. And I'd start with that. So now, like, I grate the potatoes and the whole thing. But, um, yeah, you can cheat by just starting with hash browns. Oh, that is a great thing. You can do that yeah. in the press, too. Yes, absolutely. But, Yeah. I'm going to make latkes tomorrow night. So we'll have that and, you know, just the huge. But uh, yeah, <laughs> the we huge, haven't really, the huge, we haven't really done anything yet. I've just been so busy. But I know my husband, who's not Jewish, always, and my daughter's husband's not Jewish, they always complain that we don't do the holidays right. The two non Jews, they're always like, we are supposed to be celebrating on the first night. I'm like, oh, says who? Like, we'll celebrate when we celebrate. So. But that's funny it doesn't matter what did you end up doing? what did you end up doing for thanksgiving thanksgiving oh i always host i have a bunch of people over here and um our friend hannah kaminsky came over um oh. and, and a bunch of people so it was nice we had a, a feast and then i actually just went to hannah's the other day she had a latka party and she did such a good job she was really nervous because she said she's never had people to her house before and she did such an amazing job not only that she made me uh baked latkes and then she put out like a ton of food labeled everything she was so cute and organized and uh like half the food said you know oil free and I know that was for an audience of one so I appreciated her doing that so that's so cool. The, you know, I'm not, not not as a judgment. I'm just curious. The per people that eat oil, like how do they do it? Like without getting overweight or sick? I'm just curious. I, you know, I don't know. I guess there's just like a a mindset of that oil is healthy, especially olive oil. I think people, you know, cite the Mediterranean diet, which I think is probably. I mean, it's probably okay in small amounts if you don't have like disease or if you're not overweight. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know. Um, but I'm so used to not eating oil that, you know, I just, I don't like it, but you know, yeah, definitely not to judge. You don't, I mean. Well, what I mean, like, I don't feel like I can understand salt. Like I think salt is the hardest thing to give up between sugar, oil, salt, yeah, but I don't think oil enhances the food taste. It doesn't like doesn't I, it, a lot of times it doesn't make a difference. Like, for example, and I know this because when I used to teach cooking classes, I would make a, a soup like a nutrient rich black bean soup. And I would do that first step, that obligatory step, you know, saute the onion and garlic and four tablespoons olive oil. And I and and either people couldn't tell the difference or when they voted for the one they like better, they always said the one without oil. So I really, other than for frying, which is not healthy, what is oil doing to food that people feel like they can't live without it? Unless it's just the high calorie density that people respond to, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's like a mouthfeel kind of thing. Um, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I've been, it's been eight and a half years. I haven't eaten it in so long that, you know, it, yeah. it's not appealing to me, but yeah. I mean, I think it's just like a 
one of those things like eating meat, like you just grow up doing it. You think that's just how it is. You think you can't live without it or cheese. Cheese is probably a better example because I think a lot of people um, really don't have a problem giving up meat, but ha think they can't give up dairy. And, um, you know, once you do it, you're like, okay, done, not going back. It's just one of those things you have to get used to. Yep. And when you do, it's easy. It is easy. Easy beasy. Yep. Nice. All right. Should I get started? Absolutely. I never even heard of the Jennifer Aniston salad until you told me about it. Yeah, we talked about it last time. And you know what? So I did a little research. Allegedly, this is the salad that she ate on the set of Friends every day for 10 years. And I have a hard time believing it because it was pretty high fat. The original one had like salami, turkey, bacon, uh, like a half a cup of feta, pistachios, and a quarter cup of olive oil. No, if you ate that every day, there's no way you'd look like Jennifer Aniston, I don't think. Um, and then I found on somebody else's website, like a lower calorie version, and, and I think it was vegan. Um, but it still had a quarter cup of olive oil and some other stuff. So I've taken it down a notch. It's vegan. It's low fat. And I started eating it every day. It is delicious. My version's a little bit different because hers didn't even have lettuce in it. Um, it was more like a kind of a tabbouleh thing with a lot of chickpeas, but you'll see. I've made it like a big, big old salad. But first, we're going to start with a vegetable soup because uh, this is plant-based classics and nothing says winter like a big old creamy pot of vegetable soup. And this one is good. I'm going to... Let me turn on my thing, my heat. I cannot get my second uh, camera to work today, so I'm sorry, but I'll move my, my computer around. Okay, so first I'm just heating up the pan, the pot. I like to get it pretty nice and hot before I uh, start putting my onions in. All right, I chopped everything in advance today so you didn't have to spend an hour watching me chop things. Plus there was a lot of different things. I'm gonna pour the water out of my, so one of the ingredients in the vegetable soup is um, two little potatoes or medium potatoes and I chopped them ahead of time. So if you need to do that so that they don't turn brown, just put them in really cold water, which I did. I put like ice cubes and they stayed really nice. Let me just get the water out of that. So those will be ready to go. Okay, my pan is probably hot. My pot, I always say pot, pan instead of pot. Okay, I'm gonna put the onions in. Just let those go a little bit. I always like to put the onions in and let stir them a little bit and then put the, um, like the broth in to, so it doesn't stick. But let them go a little bit before you do that. Okay, so we'll just give those one second. I guess I can move my, let me move my computer over here. Come with me, my lovelies. Let's go over here. All right, let's oh, see. Seeing another view of your beautiful house. <laughs> another view. All right, so I'm just gonna let those go. Put a little bit of broth. Give it a stir. Um, get my time ready. Oh my gosh. I love time. It smells so good. All right, we'll get that ready. All right, so you know, the onions take a minute. Um, Chef AJ, did you watch Lessons in Chemistry yet? You know, I'm going to ask you. Not yet, the show, though. Do you, how, do you like the show, and how does it compare to the book? Okay. This is maybe the only time I've ever said this in the whole entire world. I think that I like the show better than the book. I can't believe it. That does not usually happen. But they did such an amazing job on the show. Um they really developed this one storyline. She had this neighbor in the book and it was just like some old lady across the street. And they didn't really develop that relationship, but instead they made it a family across the street. 
And it was a really interesting storyline. So I think they did such a great job. Um, what what is what is the Zoom Unity thing? The Zoom Unity. Zoom Unity. Yeah, <laughs> that's our community on Zoom, which you can only yeah. see if you watch on YouTube, guys. If you saw Lessons in Chemistry or read the book, let me know which did you like better. Yeah, but I like the actress in it, so I should like it. Yeah, what's her name? Brie Larson. Yep, she won an Oscar for was it called Room? Uh huh. Oh, that was so good. That was and crazy. She, yeah, that was. She was a superhero in one of the one of the Marvel movies too. Yeah, right? I don't watch superhero movies really. Um, and then the guy who's in it is Bill. You know the actor Bill Pullman. It's his son, and he looks just like him. And as a matter of fact, like I didn't even know that was his son. I was like, I wonder if that's Bill Pullman's son. That looks just like him, and I googled it, and it was. I think he was in um, Top Gun also, the new Top Gun. But anyway, he's a really good actor. All right, well, you can see they're starting to get a little bit translucent, but not quite. Another minute, another sec. Um, keep these from sticking. Okay, so what we're going to do after this is ready, or not when it's ready, but after the onions are finished cooking, I'm going to put in a tablespoon of thyme. This is probably the dumb way to do this. Spill it everywhere. Do not try this at home. Okay. I think I'm going to put my garlic in now. Don't you wish that they had the sautéed oil-free onions already ready? Oh, yeah. I would buy those. I'm lazy. I really would. Because like, even when I'm having a simple veggie burger and I'll put like raw onion on it, I'm like, God, this would be so much better with, you know, caramelized onions. And sometimes, yeah. I, but it would be, I, Chef Darshana Thacker says you can, you know, do that in advance if you want. And then freeze them? And freeze them. She says she's done that. It's just then I just didn't got to cut the onions. I just wish somebody would do it for me. I know. You know what? That's not my favorite thing to do either. I kind of hate chopping onions. All right, now I'm going to put a tablespoon of thyme in here. I like to put the spices on the onions and garlic. Mix it up. Mmm, that smells good. It's, you know, uh, you can you can um, buy onions chopped, but for like, I like them better when it's they're sliced for putting on things. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I know. Such is the life of an oil-free person. There are a lot of things that could be, you know, well, I feel like there's not enough of us oil-free people to make it like a valuable business model, unfortunately. There's not even enough of us, of us regular vegan people. I know. It's so sad. Okay. Now that that's all going, I'm going to put in the... Uh, I'm going to put in carrots and celery. We're going to put in, what else? My potatoes. Let me grab my potatoes. Put those in. Two medium potatoes. Mine were a little on the smallish side, but I'm going to serve this tomorrow night with... Um, the latkes, so I think it'll be okay. We'll be potato heavy anyway. And you're going to add the broth. There's six cups of broth, so that's four. And put two more. Put two more cups of broth in that. So six cups of broth. I was surprised that just my regular grocery store, which is called Rayleigh, sells salt-free broth. It's called Kitchen Basics, and it was pretty good. Did it have oil? I'm gonna I guess no. Don't think so. I, I don't need to look because right I think I. Yeah, because I feel like I've seen Kitchen Basics before, and I looked, and it had oil. All right, let me. I'll go. I'll see if I can pull it up. I could on, be online. I hope not, but because I served it to Doctor Goldhammer. Oh God! So, <laughs> yesterday he came. Oh yeah. Oh my God, it was so much fun. Dr. Lyle came, Dr. Neil Nedley. We had a 100th birthday party for Dr. Sean Scharfenberg, who actually turns 100 on Friday, and he'll be a guest on the show that day. Oh, wow. I can't believe he's 100. That's insanity. He's, and he is so adorable. 
he everybody says he's just pre a precious he's human sweet, you know right just yeah. a kind sweet person um and a hundred i mean who makes it to a hundred that healthfully that still drives and drives at night and drives a little red sports car? He recently yeah. spoke in Palm Springs and, you know, I used to live there. And when I moved here, I wouldn't even drive my own car. I had to pay somebody to do it. And he, he just spoke there. Oh yeah, I'm driving. Like who, who in a hundred drives from Sacramento to Palm Springs? That's insanity. Yeah. And he drives at night. That's what well, he crazy. prefers not to, but a lot of people just don't really like to drive at night. If you know, but he will, but that's not his problem. Right. But the, the but the thing is, is he can if he wants right. to, you know. Yeah, a lot of people, even young people, don't like to drive at I, night. It's depends. Like, you know, yeah. if it's like a dark road and you don't know where you're going, it's uncomfortable. Yep. Yeah, I don't love that. Um, okay, so that's going now. See? What I'm going to do now is make the creamy part. Okay, on my website and in the show notes, um, I made a nut-free version. I'm not doing the nut-free version today because I'm making this for my kids. Like I said, they're coming over for dinner tomorrow night and they would prefer the fat version with a half a cup of cashews in it. Uh, so today I'm going to make that. And... Uh, if you don't want cashews, if you have heart disease, if you're allergic to nuts, you don't want all the fat, just look on my website or in the show notes and do the nut-free version. The nut-free version, um, I basically make with like oat milk and a little cornstarch. I thicken that up on the stove and then pour that into the soup. But what I'm going to do for this version is just put a cup of water in a high-speed blender and then a half a cup of cachets and blend that up. I'm not gonna add this right away. I wanna wait till like the potatoes and the um, carrots are like fork tender. So it's probably about eight minutes. Let me get my giant fork out so I can test that in a minute. Okay, let me blend this. Give me just a second. I think that I have my ear pod, my AirPods in, so maybe you won't hear all the ruckus or, oh, it, it cancels out the noise, but all right, give me a second to blend this up. That's nice. It did bl did blend the noise. It muted the noise while she's blending. I'll just tell you who's on the show for the rest of the week, or at least tomorrow, if you're interested. If you'd like to be notified of all the guests, just go to chefaj.com, sign up for my newsletter once a week on either Saturday or Sunday. We send you the schedule. We do have two shows tomorrow at 11 o'clock. We have Chef Will from Whole Harvest making a holiday feast and at 1 p.m. a bonus show with Jane Thurnell Reed, and she's going to tell you how you can navigate the holidays if you have difficulty maybe saying no or eating things you don't want and she has a wonderful powerpoint on that hey you back i'm back okay so we're i got the cashew milk going i just want to check my recipe you know i am famous for leaving things out okay let me make sure i got everything do that every time all right all right i think i'm good okay so now, oh, you know what? I want to put, wait, let me see. Do I put my garbanzos in? I'm going to put the garbanzos in too. I didn't put the garbanzo beans in with the carrots and the celery, but I should have done that. So that's just a can of drained rinsed garbanzo beans and those are put down. Um, okay, so while that's starting to go, let's do, I'll start on the hummus. The hummus is going to go in, um, my Jennifer Aniston salad, it's going to be part of the dressing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take out two tablespoons of aquafaba. That's just the juice or liquid that's in the uh, garbanzo bean can. So before you drain it, either put it to the side or just go ahead and put it in your um, food processor. Now I'm going to drain the rest. I'm not going to rinse it even. 
to kind of oh, give them. Hey, hey, Lauren, you made me think when you said that the lessons in chemistry was the first time you liked a movie better than the book. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday we went to see Waitress, the musical. Uh huh. My God, it's. I don't always listen to Rotten Tomatoes, but when Rotten Tomatoes, both the critics and the audience agree, and they got 100% from the critics and 96% from the audience. I mean, when's the last time you saw a movie where everyone just cheered, you know? I mean, this was the best movie. It was such a good movie. Wait, you saw the movie or you saw the music? Well, like, what it is, is there was a movie in 2007 with Carrie Russell right, that was great and right, right. Griffin called Waitress. So right. they made a Broadway musical about it, which I didn't know about because I don't live anywhere there or really visit New York. And with Sarah Bareilles doing the music. And so she starred in the movie. And this was the actual filming of the Broadway play. It was exceptional. Oh, wow. Because I've seen both the movie and the Broadway play. And I will tell you i loved the broadway play as well and so i imagine the movie's just like you said it's just filmed so it's not any different than the broadway yeah, it play was, it was so good i gotta tell you it was so good i was it was late i was tired and i stayed awake and that that tells you if, if i stay awake the whole movie and it was a long Aww. one too it was just wonderful it was just so wonderful oh god i loved that movie i loved andy griffith in that oh, he was he such wasn't he amazing? The guy that was J old Joe, and the guy that played him in the in the the newer movie, I I don't remember the actor's name, but he played, um, what's his name, Kevin? What's the guy? The King of Queens, Kevin James. Oh, father, Kevin King James. Of Queens. He, he oh. it was, everything was great, and the guy that played the you know the Oklahoma City guy, Oki or whatever, he he was. Uh -huh. Anyway, guys, yeah. see you know I get. Uh, can you tell us about Dr. Scharfenberg's party? Well, I made a wonderful meal that I actually filmed everything that I made the day before that I'm going to be putting on YouTube on Saturday. And the people that are on my mailing list will get a PDF of the recipes. So that was wonderful. Oh, here's a question for you. Claire says, "What? Are, how about avocados? I don't know if she's asking how about them for health or maybe the, for the creaminess in your in your creamy soup. Oh, Avocados in the soup? I've never put avocado in a vegetable soup. Is that what she's asking me? Oh, I don't know. She, um, the, that's why it wasn't real specific. It just says, how about avocados? How about them? Well, you know, I don't eat a ton of avocados. For those of you who don't know, I had heart disease. I have evidence that I've reversed it. I kind of followed Dr. Esselstyn's, but as you can see, I... I followed Dr. Esselstyn for, for a very long time, which is, you know, no nuts, no avocado, no oil. But I'm eight and a half years into this journey. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And so I have added in um, a little more fat to my diet just because occasionally, I mean, I don't eat a lot of fat. And like, this is going to be a half a cup of um cashews in a giant pot of soup so i'm not it's not even like i'm eating a half a cup of of cashews it's very little um avocados i really reserve for when i'm out and about and i don't have any choices on the menu like at a restaurant except maybe avocado toast and even then i'll take off half the avocado because you know they slather it and i just like one a little bit or a little avocado sandwich. So I really right now reserve it for special occasions. Um, but you know, this is my thing, whatever is gonna help you stay plant-based, that's what you do. If you need avocados, like my cousin, Hillary, just absolutely cannot, she eats this way, but she can't give up avocados. And I tell her, you know, just do what you have to do. Her father is one of my relatives. I had several relatives who died in their 40s. Her father was like 44 or 45 when he dropped dead from a heart attack. And so, you know, she has to stick to this way of eating. So that's that's my hot take on avocados. Um, okay, so I put in the aquafaba, the two tablespoons. Now, I forgot um, that I normally do this. What I normally do after this is um, put my um, food processor on and then through the top, I drop in my clove of garlic and then it just like mushes it, it like minces it for you. So you don't have to do that. But I forgot when I was prepping everything this morning and I already like minced up my garlic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in. 
I'm just going to put everything in. Um, just a quarter cup of lemon juice. Chef AJ, I took your advice and I bought some ready-made lemon juice. And I was like, damn, what was I doing? Squeezing all these lemons all my life. Uh, okay, so I'm putting that in. <laughs> I don't think it makes a big difference, the, the, the bottled organic lemon and lime juice versus fresh. I really don't, but maybe some people think it does. You know, it depends. I think it depends on the um, recipe. Now I'm putting in a can of garbanzo beans, also known as chickpeas. I think like when I made the um, like the lemon, the lemon bars uh, or lemon squares, however you call them. Then, then um, you thought fresh was better. Yes. Fresh has to be better, but also you need the zest. So what's the point? You have to zest them anyway. So you might as well squeeze them. So, okay, let's see. Then I'm just, so I just put in the lemon juice, the garbanzo, um, aquafaba, the garlic, and I got a couple spices here. Where are they? Oh, I moved them over here. I'm just gonna put in, and these spices are optional. You don't have to put in a lot of spices. I like a little, like a little half a teaspoon maybe of some cumin. Oh, you know what? I'm going to put the spices at the end. I think it's better if you blend it and then put the spices. So I'll do the spices at the end. Um, I am going to put in a teaspoon of miso. Instead of salt, you can do salt or miso or both, however you want to do it. I'm just going to do a little teaspoon. I'm going to do a little teaspoon of apple cider vinegar just to give it a little zing. And here's another example of where you could use some more fat, which I'm not going to do. Um, again, if you're not on a hard diet, if you're not watching your weight, you could put in between one to four tablespoons of tahini. And the more tahini you put, the creamier and probably has more of that mouthfeel that you want. Um, so do that if you like. I'm not going to do it. Well, you know what? I'm going to put one tablespoon because like I said, it's for my kids. They're going to eat this tomorrow. So I'm just going to put one tablespoon of tahini. But do anywhere from one to four. Eh, it's not even the full tablespoon. That's good. Just a little fat. The kids like the fat. I think you also told me, Chef AJ, my husband didn't like my cooking because I didn't put enough fat. And he was doing this <laughs> too. And I think he agrees with you. He definitely likes when I put a little more of that. So I'll do that one for the fam. Okay, let me just give this a little blend over here. Whoops. Okay. Got my mom's old gold food processor. Okay, let me put this on. this out over here. I think my uh, potatoes are getting tender. Yeah, it's so much ready. Then I like to scrape down the sides a little bit during. Oops. Do you have any plans for Christmas or New Year's? Yeah, you know, I do a whole Christmas too, because my husband celebrates Christmas and of course, my husband said nobody likes to celebrate Christmas more than a little Jewish girl who never had a tree. So let me That's tell you. So funny. What do you make for Christmas and what do you do? Um, I make sort of a Thanksgiving-ish dinner because that's what he likes. But yeah, I did uh, a chickpea loaf this year and uh, like a vegan stuffing. Well, everything's vegan. Stuffing and sweet, whip, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes green beans. My friend, uh, Lisa, you know, my friend, Lisa rice, uh, kitchen plantastic. She has such a good green bean recipe on her website. It's just like steamed green beans. And then at the last minute you put garlic and brag liquid amino or tamari and, uh, a tablespoon of tahini and you just mix it up. And it is so everybody at Thanksgiving was like, what'd you put on these green beans? Did you put Parmesan cheese? I thought everything was vegan. And I'm like, no, it doesn't have Parmesan cheese that has tahini in it. And I don't, I don't know why, like just the consistency was so good. Um, Jesse, you want to know what brand of broth do you use? 
what brand of bra? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pacific. Pacific. Okay, that's what I thought. And this is um, low sodium and it doesn't have oil in it. And of course, you can make yours. And I do sometimes. I never seem to have any when I come on this show. But a lot of times, you know, I'll keep a plastic bag uh, or a big glass container and put all my vegetable scraps in it. And then you can just boil them down at some point and make, make a little vegetable broth. Um, okay, let me take a look at this. I want to give it one more little stir. Okay. What do you do New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve. I normally we go out to dinner with friends and then they come over here and we hang out. Um, but this New Year's Eve, I think I'm going to have an extra big treat. I have my baby brother, Eric, who did not get married and have kids till he was like 45 years old. He's 50 years old now. Um, has three little kids. He lives in New York. I have the best sister-in-law, Caitlin, and they're coming with, so Eric's a twin, and then he married a, a lady, Caitlin, who has twins in her family, so they have twins, and they have a little girl, so they have like three kids under like five years old, so they're coming with all their kids, her family with the twins, and her parents, and I think everybody's going to come here, and hopefully... Um, I gave them a choice. I'm like, do you want me to make dinner? Do you want me to order in pizza? Maybe I'll do a combo of both so that the kids will, you know, and probably my brother will have pizza. Um, but I'll probably like cook and have everybody over here. So it'll be a little bit kid centric this year, which normally it's not. Um, what do you do on New Year's Eve? Usually nothing because we don't want to be out driving with people that are consuming alcohol and stuff. Yeah. So we, if people want to come here, you know, we would have something we're kind of new up here. We usually historically we've done vision boards. That's when we create our vision boards, you know, yes. for the next year. Yes. But Christmas, we're, we're, we, we're begging a vegan restaurant to try to open because I never celebrated Christmas. I've never even been invited to anybody's house for Christmas. They just, are you decided, kidding? No, my whole life, you You're know, invited. So, You're invited no one, here. no one, well, I'd love to come to your house, but I guess maybe they just, oh, well, she's Jewish or she has some, you know, but, but I never, it, I feel bad for Charles because we never, we've never gotten an invitation to anybody's house for Christmas our entire life. Oh, I, that's oh why he's not. I know it's so sad, isn't it? Right. But we're gonna, um, we used, I used to work at true North, which was the best because then it was like, I celebrated all the holidays there. I loved when yeah. I had a job for eight years, it was just during the month of December. So yeah. Anyway, oh, man, that's, Oh, I'm sorry. You don't get you never uh, got invited anywhere. I would invite you to my house. Oh, well, you are invited you. to my house. I'd love to eat your food. Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. You know, speaking of vision boards, do you know you were out on my vision board a few years ago? And look where I am now. See, it works, guys. It I does. told you. And, you know, I it, did the same thing with McDougal and Goldhammer. Yes. Before I ever met them, I put my picture with me with them. And then I got hired by both of them. It totally yeah. works. I, that's what I did. My picture with you and Dr. Esselstyn. And, the, I, oh and I know all those people I now. I love that you manifested this. Totally. And... um yeah. Oh, well, I, people I'm are inviting me now. I love this uh, that the Zamunity is inviting me, but the thing is, one oh. of them, Brandy's in Ohio, and then I don't know where you live, but I appreciate that. Uh, what brand of tahini do you use? Uh, they all taste different, says Marzi. This is, they have it at my grocery store. Zayad, what does it say? I got to put my glasses on. Zayad. Looks like, um, so my dad, so. With every crazy thing that's going on in the world, I was going to say, this looks like like um, some kind of Middle Eastern brand. With every crazy thing that's going on in the world, I just want to say, you know, my mother is Jewish. My stepfather was Arab, Muslim, Palestinian. And so this is the kind of food that we always had in the house. He always, he used this brand of tahini. Um, and he made the best hummus, but he put a, I don't know if he put olive oil in it. I know he put olive oil on the top. He's passed away, but so I can't 
can't ask him. Um, I think that he did. I think the really, really traditional um, hummus, you don't put oil in it. But in all the store-bought brands, they seem to have oil in it. And I just got that tahini at the grocery store, but it's very good. It's very authentic. Okay, so then I put my, um, I like to put my spices in at the end and mix them up. So I'm just going to put like half a teaspoon of cumin. I'm going to put half a teaspoon of paprika, paprika, not smoked, just the regular kind. And then if you want to put some salt, you can put some salt. I'm not going to put salt in this. I put the miso and that's good enough for me. But again, if you're making it for other people and you want to, I think they might expect a little bit of a salty taste to it. Okay, I'm just going to mix it up in my Ninja Creamy container. So is this your idea to, to yeah. make this in a Ninja Creamy? That's fabulous. You know, because I really miss like a very whipped hummus. And um, I thought, how can I get it like whipped like that without oil? And then I was like, you know what? What if I do it in the Ninja Creamy? Because that thing makes the ice cream so whipped, it's nuts. Um, I just wish you could taste it. This is one of those things you have to taste. Okay, so now, if you don't have a Ninja Creamy, you're done. If you could add like a little more water and whip it up a little more in your food processor, but pretty much you're done now, okay? And you, this is still delicious hummus. You could have it. It's perfectly good. Okay, so those of you who have a Ninja Creamy, you know the big pain about it is you have to freeze it overnight. You want to get it kind of wait even. so you actually freeze the hummus oh yeah yes what? that is that is like revolutionary i never heard of that okay i just well, got a text i gotta do this shameless plug i'm sorry from my it. culture i having i just i don't like selling but pete my i have four books in case you don't know that and these two are published by book publishing company and he's very nice. He's vegan. He's a vegan publisher and he is bundling really? them together for a special sale. So they're cheaper than you would get them anywhere else. And it's including free postage if you're in the United States. But more than that, we're giving a lot of virtual stuff like cooking classes and a whole bunch more recipes. If you already have it, it might make a great stock. Probably wouldn't make a stocking stuffer because it's too big, but it'd be a nice gift. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Here's mine. This is my unprocessed. Aww. And mine's autographed by Aww. the author. The author. So, the author. I love it. But can I tell you that, oh, I don't know if I should say this or not, but I saw an advanced copy of your next book that's coming out because I was at Hannah's house. Oh, my God. Can I say I'm it? I'm so happy that she showed it to you. Oh, so my God. It is so gorgeous. Thank it's you. It's your dessert book, and it is stunning so and, well it's yes. stunning because hannah took the pictures let's be honest you know it's stunning she's, she's but also amazing. it's delicious yeah, yeah she's delicious. amazing uh, i've had a, a lot of the recipes out of there and, and they're very good i love your recipes especially for dessert but i make a lot of your recipes all the time i make your cranberry you know what i make your cranberry um relish or cranberry sauce all the time and just eat it on my oatmeal because did you know that cranberries are one of the highest sources of iodine did not know that i, I didn't know it the either. time to stock up that is the easiest relish i gotta say why spend it's so much so time good. with so many ingredients when you can make really the best relish with three ingredients we did serve that yesterday for dr sharp yes. as well so good with the oranges and the dates ah oh, it's so delicious good. Yeah, so if anybody needs more iodine in their diet, which I'm going to guess pretty much everybody does, just start making that um, cranberry sauce. Okay, so this I'm going to freeze overnight, not even joking. And then the next day, wait, let me get mine out. Where is it? Oh, here it is. All right, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I didn't make another one to freeze and show you. But you're going to freeze it overnight. Then you're going to stick it on your Ninja Creamy machine and just use it on the ice cream uh, blender or just the ice cream setting. And you might want to spin it twice, do like a respin, but it's going to come out and you're going to think I have lost my mind because it's going to be all powdery and weird. 
just take it out of the Ninja Creamy container and put it in a bowl so that it'll defrost faster and let it, it's going to have to sit like maybe three hours. This is not a fast process, but it's worth it. So it's going to sit like three hours and then it's going to start um, condensing and not being so powdery. And then you'll mix it up when it's not frozen anymore. And it is so whipped and delicious. And I don't know if it's going to break your Ninja Creamy machine or not. I've made it three times. It hasn't broken mine. You can't tell how whipped and creamy this is, but it is. It is so good. Whippy. Um, but even it says it's going to break your Ninja Creamy machine if you use like the pineapple in water. So I don't know. So take it with a grain of salt. You know, take it with a, you know, we say take it with a grain of kelp here. That's right. Take it with a grain I'm of just kelp. Kidding. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Okay. So we're going to put a pin in that because we're going to come back to that and make some um, dressing with that. But now going back to the soup because it's all um, fork tender now. So now I'm going to, but let me bring you back over here. I'm with me. Okay, this is going good. It's all fork tender now. Now I'm going to pour in my cashew water mixture. Just give that a little blend. Oh, it's so good. Are you going to come back to a comedy class with me? Maybe. I'm loving it. Why haven't you ever do you know I did two shows last week, live shows? Oh, my God. You're amazing. What do you want me to do, comedy or – and then you're going to put in a half a cup of peas. You want me to do comedy or uh, improv? Which one? Well, maybe I'll do both with you. Maybe I'll do neither. Okay, so now I put in a half a cup of peas. And then this is just going to – I'm going to let it cook for, like – Normally, I would let it cook for about five more minutes, but to tell you the truth, I think I cooked it long enough because I was talking so much. So now I'm just going to throw in the kale, like a couple of cups of kale. I might even put in a little more. I like a lot of kale. And then just turn off the heat and let it wilt, and it's ready. And it is it's really good. I'm going to put it in a bowl. Put it in a bowl with some Italian parsley on it. i show you what it looks like. Hang on. <laughs> you're, you're hilarious <laughs> not doing a very good job okay let's see there's my little bowl that's a tough question would I rather have you in my improv class or my comedy class we if we were in comedy we'd probably get to spend more time together and could help each other on our sets but with improv we'd actually get to do scenes together yeah so it's a tough I don't know it's what do you what do you like better? See, I prefer improv. I just do the comedy do. to hang out with people and it's fun and but I prefer improv as the art form. Yep. Um you know, it depends. There was a time in my life where I just loved doing improv. It was so much fun. Improv is a lot of fun. There but I think at the end I loved doing stand up. Like it was such a there was no thrill like it when you would have like a great set and come off of that and just kind of kill and I don't know but right now I don't really either want to do either one but I want to spend more time with you so maybe I will okay and I'm just putting a little bit of chopped Italian parsley on it and it is yum look at that soup that's good okay now I'm just going to whip up the little salad dressing Clean up my kitchen a little. It's making crazy. Okay, now we're going to make the Jennifer Aniston salad, which is super easy. And I prepped all of this ahead of time. So also, you know, Chef AJ, I'm starting a, a podcast with Lisa. It's called Age Like a Badass Mother, and we want to have you on because you are a badass mother. Yeah. We've already had a... Jane and Ann Esselstyn and a bunch of people. It's so good. We haven't released them yet because we're just Lisa's husband's the producer and he's still editing and making us uh, 
page, like a web page and everything, but it's, it's so good. It's that's see when you're like, I don't know, you're kind of getting your improv now, like when you host your show. And that's what I feel like with the podcast. I feel like I'm getting my improv there. Um, all my good stuff, the fun stuff there. Okay. But I, but I don't get to really do comedy here. You know, that would, that would, I know. Imagine, you know, Dr. McDougal doing a PowerPoint and me making like, jokes. <laughs> I don't think you'd appreciate that. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. Okay. But you're right. I could see that. You probably would not be so happy about that. Okay. So I'm going to do, first, let me just make the dressing. So a quarter cup of my fluffy hummus. So in the original one, Jennifer Aniston allegedly was using a quarter cup of olive oil, which I just, like I said, I have a hard time believing that, but maybe, who the heck knows? Um, so a quarter cup of that fluffy hummus and a quarter cup of lemon juice and just whip it together. And that's your salad dressing. It's so lemony and creamy and yummy and simple. Okay, I just take my little baby whisk, whisk it up. Whisk it good. And whisk it good. Put it aside. Okay. So then in the salad, I'm just going to put three three cups of, I like my greens chopped up, just three cups of that, three cups of lettuce. Um, you can put up to three quarters of a cup of like, I like quinoa better than the bulgur uh, wheat for this. But either one, you don't want to put too much because then it overpowers it. But I'm going to put like, yeah, I'll put three quarters of a cup of the quinoa already cooked in advance. Half a cup of cucumbers. Half a cup of chickpeas drained and rinsed. Quarter cup of red onion. And, you know, if you don't like your red onion very strong, you can put it in ice water for like 10 minutes. It sort of tamps it down a little bit. Um, I like to put some uh, sun-dried tomato and you can buy it not in oil. It just comes like in a pouch and then I put some boiling water over it for a minute to like soften it up because otherwise it's kind of like rubber. You have to kind of rehydrate it. And then the thing that makes it so yummy, and I didn't finish doing this, you could put up to, I would do between a quarter cup and half a cup of mint. Look at this beautiful mint. I like just to, let me just cut it up. It's easier. I just get my kitchen scissors rather than chopping. Yeah, or, or, you know, they have the ones with the eight things. So you can get them like little ribbons, herb scissors, what? actually. They're herb cool. scissors. She can't what? I learned something every time I come on here. Herb scissors. Yeah, I got mine from, well, first I got my first pair from Sharon McCray and my second pair from Dr. Hans Steele. They're really cool, but they're great for like basil when you want like little ribbons, like shipping on, yeah. but you don't want to have to use your knife. Yeah. I never want to have to use my knife. I hate chopping things. I hate, cho well, I shouldn't say I hate chopping things because I spent so much of my life chopping things that I have. I enjoy it. I enjoy chopping things. It's meditative. I just tell that to myself. I love it. And actually I do. It is meditative. Um, but this is easier, I guess. Okay. I guess I'm going to have to get some, uh, or are they just called herb scissors? Yeah. On Amazon. Let me look them up for you. I was going to look something else up on Amazon for, oh no, I was going to look up something they asked. What were we talking about at the beginning? Uh, product or herbs. who knows herb scissors time. with five blade and cover yeah like they're like um anywhere between eleven dollars and eighteen dollars not and there's one wow. for, yeah once for i see one for 9.99 9.59 yeah it sounds they're like cool. a good hanukkah present yeah okay. so i have about a third cup of herbs in there of mint and now i'm gonna do uh parsley just some flat leaf parsley same thing just between a quarter and a half a cup. I think a third cup is probably good. Just depends on your, your palate, what you like. And you can get the little stems in there. Fine. 
Oh, yeah. And then um, I was putting, so you could also put up to a quarter cup of pistachios or pumpkin seeds. And I just do like a tablespoon. Again, I'm not trying to have like a ton of fat in there, but it gives it a little something, a little flavor. Um, and again, Hannah Kaminsky told me that pistachios are like the lowest fat nut she thought that you could get. And so I looked it up and it actually is lower in fat than the really? pumpkin seeds. And that's funny because it's my favorite nut. How much lower in fat is it? I think it was like for, I think it was just a couple of grams lower than the pumpkin seeds. That's so like, I can't remember if I looked up a quarter cup. I think I looked up a quarter cup and like the pumpkin seeds were maybe 16 or 14 grams and the pistachios were maybe like 12 grams of fat. But, you know, I don't want to have 12 grams of fat. Okay, so now here's... Um, you know what has the lowest fat is chestnuts. Have you ever had roasted chestnuts? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I have had chestnuts. Um, okay, and so now you can see, here's my pistachios. I have like, it's probably a tablespoon and I'm just going to crush them. I have them in a little baggie. You just crush them up. Give some more real estate rather than, you know, just getting like four pistachios. Now I got to like crumble of them. Put that in there. Okay, I think that's it. Of course, I probably left something out. Okay, you can do optional, like make feta out of tofu or just cube some tofu um, and do that. But I'm not going to, like I said, I'm trying to keep it a little bit low fat today. I've got other things I'm going to eat this with. Got my tahini in there. I got my cashews in my soup. So I don't want to go crazy. Don't go crazy. Okay. So I don't know if you could see all that. Okay. Now look at all this yumminess. It's a really good salad. Like I said, hers didn't have um, the lettuce in it even. It just had like a whole can of chickpeas and some other stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna give my salad a toss and then I'm gonna, don't put all your dressing in at once because you don't want it to be soggy. I just start with like half, give it a toss, see how much this, Oh, thanks, Dixie. Dixie's on it. I was going to look up if that was if there's oil in the broth that's called kitchen. Basics. Oh, that's what you were going to look. That's right. Gosh, Thank I you. can't even remember what happened at the beginning of kitchen basics, salt free broth. Let's see. Here it is. Let's see if they'll show the back of the box. Okay, so I got my thing tossed up nice and good. Now I can eat this whole thing for lunch. Like I could eat this giant salad, but let's just pretend that I'm a dainty little thing. I'm just gonna serve some up in a bowl. It's so good and lemony. You can even give like an extra squeeze of lemon over the top. Delish. Look at that. Aren't she pretty? That it looks delicious. It, it's really good. I need to give it a taste. Mm. Sorry, I got my ear pods in. I love that. I love that bowl. Mm. Okay, I just pulled it up finally. We have the ingredients in the Unsalted Kitchen Basics vegetable stock available at many stores, including Safeway. Vegetable stock, which is made from water, carrot juice concentrate, mushroom juice concentrate, onion juice concentrate, tomato juice concentrate, celery juice concentrate, red bell pepper juice concentrate. Where do they get all that? Natural flavors, which I know some people don't like, black pepper, bay leaf, and thyme. So no oil. Oh, good. You know, zero good, good. calories from fat, uh, naturally occurring sodium of 160. So yeah, it's, I'm going to stick with it. I do like the plant stock ones as well, but they're much smaller. So, and, you know, they, 
can't get it like what yeah. when you need it you have to order it and the kitchen basics is really cheap so i've been buying it or i use the oh, I, I use the local spicery sometimes the umami mommy he's got a broth oh, yeah it's fantastic too Some good stuff which i often use nice well wonderful presentation well, that's it well thanks the soup the salad and the crazy hummus that is so cool. I wonder what else we could be doing with the Ninja Creamy that we haven't I bought. know. Well, like I was saying before, it made me nervous because it says on the thing, don't even use it with the pineapple in the water. Oh, but that's you not true. Me. I've always, I know. I've, I've used that since day one. That is so not true. I know. That's why I said, you know, I'm just going to give it a try. I hope I don't break my Ninja Creamy, but it didn't even phase the, it came out perfectly. It didn't, didn't seem to bother it at all. So nice. So next month is January. There's no, I don't think there's any holidays really in January. Oh, wow. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, but I don't think yes. there's a traditional meal for that. No, holiday. it'll be close to um, like Super Bowl, maybe some Super Bowl foods. Yep. Valentine's maybe. food. Valentine's. Wait, people will probably be going to be interested in weight loss next month, January. That's you know, New Year's resolution. Why wait, people? Um, yeah. And if anybody does want to make latkes, I forgot, like on my website on wellelephant.com, I give away a free cookbook and it has the locker, it has my latke recipe in there. And then these are all on my website, but it's also in the show notes. I think people always have trouble finding the show notes. It's under the, it's like a gray box under the video. Yeah, it's just, it's just, if they go right on, if they're on watching Facebook or Twitter, they don't see show notes, but if you just right. go more and click that, everything drops down. Everything's there. Nice. Well, thank we'll you. Have, well, hopefully I'll see you at my house for Christmas. I hope so. Thanks so much, Lauren. All right. Bye everybody. Thanks. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for Chef Will from Whole Harvest. He's going to make another holiday feast. Take care, everyone.